Good morning, everyone. Um, I was um, actually listening to, thank you very much. I was listening to Andy, and it was actually a really interesting uh, talk just about how to use the influences about how to actually make your marketing strategy work, work harder for you. But what I'm talking about today is about insights. So that's a little bit of a step before creating your marketing strategy and actually working with influencers. So one of the quick things for me and for you to understand is what is an actual insight? If you Google it, there are tons and tons of definitions of what insight is. And one of the key things for you to understand, sorry, the device might be a little bit small here, so I actually read one that I really like. It's on the psychology side. It's an understanding of relationships that sheds light on or helps to solve a problem. So companies, more often than not, will try to find solutions to what the consumer is looking for. And there are different ways to do it, and there are simply two insights that I see are really important. If you look from a customer and consumer insight, it is about interpretation of behaviors on what people do. So it's when you look at your sales and if you look at the consumer trends, you get to understand what people are buying, what they're buying for, and you can understand and find little nuggets on what you can do and how you can drive more sales or potentially develop an MPD. So the two types of insights, the way I'm looking at this, some people might say, oh, it's really about the attitude, but there are actually two. One is your behavior. It's consumer behavior is all about the top line on what people do. So if you take the likes of Nielsen or Kantar research on our data, you get to understand what people are buying, how often they're buying, what they're buying for, what type of households they're, uh, you know, the, the products bought for. And that is great. But then the key thing, and this is really the long-term play, is to understand the attitudes. So the key questions really is the what and the why. So once you know what they're doing is really important, but the why is really the long-term play to understand why they're doing it. If you look at some of the food trends that you see out there, the likes of granola sales are going to the roof, where your standard breakfast sales are stagnant, for want of a better word. So, but why people are doing it? Because they want to be healthier, so they want to make maybe make their own breakfast cereal so or make bread you know so if you get to understand that then there's a huge difference on what you do in terms of planning for your NPT or your marketing campaign I put in a few case studies just so you to kind of maybe help to visualize and see what I mean by the insights and what you can do with it first I looked at the baby wipes category and I just want you to quickly see from a top line view I try to understand sort of an issue that is out there. And a lot of people go and say, God, baby wipes are so versatile. I can wipe floors, I can wipe stains, I can wipe the baby's bum, and it's really useful. But is it though? Is it really an opportunity or is it actually an issue? For a lot of parents, me being one of them, it is an issue because surely if it's cleaning walls and cleaning stains, how much chemicals are in this product, and I'm putting that on my baby. So the need is to look for baby-friendly solutions. And there are tons out there, but one that I just want to highlight today is the one that I've looked at, and it's water wipes. It is, according to the latest checkout top 100 brands, it's the number two brand in Ireland. It came from basically nowhere, and it played against huge giants in consumer goods. So it's against Johnson's, it's against Pampers, it's against B&G. So to actually take over some of these big players, worldwide players, it's, it's a huge ethos, a huge kudos on this because on a really good product that they were able to identify something. And if you actually look at their, their TV ads, the last one that they have on, since, since last year, it was about a mom trying to wipe a crayon off a wall and it wouldn't, it wouldn't come off. And, but then she did say, and this won't come off because it's water wipes, there's no chemicals here, it's for your baby. 
and that is an amazing insight, really playing on what the parents really want, and that is driving the brand to be the number two. And if I have a crystal ball, it probably become the number one in the next three to five years. Look at the next case study, a little bit on the food side. Protein, everybody's gone mad about protein. Protein this, protein that. Protein is a, is a new solution for the health problems in the world. Isn't that right? Well, the key issue, if you try to understand why protein is so popular today, is because obesity is probably one of the biggest challenges that we face. And, but what is the need of the consumer? The consumer is looking for a solution. Consumer, people are, I, sorry to say, but I think people are lazy. Most people are lazy and they want shortcuts. Give me a solution, give me something to become healthier. But I don't want to go to the hassle of cooking some, from something from scratch. I don't want the hassle to go to the gym every day or train or play sports. But I just want to be healthy. So with the new, with its new protein trends, everybody's jumping on the bandwagon and trying to go, oh, let's just add some protein in here. Let's just add some protein there. Let's just actually pull out the claim because actually I didn't know how much protein I had in my chocolate bar. I just put it in there. If you look at the results, you have this massive wave of protein products and then for you to understand on this trend and to place your company to see, well, am I too late on this wave of protein or is the market already saturated or is it an opportunity, a niche product for me? Because I say, even if you walk around here today, you probably find 10 or not or more products that are all about protein. Protein balls, protein bars, protein snacks. So is it too late or is there a niche for you? And bear in mind, there's something a bit more around, but I don't sell food, so how is this relevant to me? Well, if you're a marketing agency, by any means, trying to find the right influencers that will help to drive that agenda for you is what you're potentially looking for, or if you're looking for something around packaging solutions that you can help to make protein consumption easier on the go. So then, that's how you can potentially tap into an insight or a trend that may not be 100% relevant to your products today. So bear in mind that when you're looking at insights, when you're trying to find insights, don't look at simply just your category of the products that you currently sell. Be aware that you know everything is connected. The last one is the baked beans category. It's been a, a household uh, favorite around Ireland for years and years. Everybody's been buying bachelors and hives for breakfast. Now that has kind of slowly died and baked beans is used for more lunch or dinner or sometimes by any means or weekends uh, full fry. So, but again, it's turning into a little bit more of a healthier trend and trying to um, face on some of the uh, challenges that they had before. And so one of the key things is the latest developments that we've seen from the likes of Heinz, our bachelors, has been around packaging. How can I make the snack pots? How can I make the bigger fridge packs? They've been fantastic. They've been phenomenal in terms of performance. And that is great by any means. But that's a, you grow your business, but you grow slowly, and it's only a short-term gain. To understand what is the long play, and this is around the attitude, is Okay, so I can make a, a bigger pot, I can make a smaller pot, it's easy on my production line. That's great, I can do that, increase shelf space, throw some new news to the category, and my buyer will be happy, my consumers will be engaged, happy days. But if you're looking for a long-term play, what is it that you need to understand? The category is stagnant, people are bored with the product, so how can you actually bring it to today's millennials? This is the buzzword, isn't it? How can I actually get the millennials to buy my products? So, well, you need to talk to them. You need to actually get the product to speak for itself. So it's really what's important and to be truly different. And one of the products that I picked today to look into how you can engage with millennials in what you'd like to say is a boring category is actually cool beans. 
they have been extremely successful in Ireland and they're actually now exporting to the UK. So they're in Waitrose and they're selling well over 200 stores in the UK. This is a success story that came from nowhere, came from, again, against massive players for the likes of Bachelors and Hines, and they're now uh, a really big player from a millennial's point of view. If you look at where they really play, where they're really important is for the gym goers, people that are looking for the health side. So, and if you can see here, if you look at their packaging in detail, they talk about all the health benefits that people are looking for. So, and I was speaking to uh, one of them actually a few months ago, and I was asking, oh, so which one will be one of your biggest stores? Which, where do you sell the most? Because I was curious to understand, and they said it was Ranala. And I was like, Ranala? Super Valley Ran, that tiny store? And yeah, no, there's a gym just above it. So people just, after the gym, they want something quick, they go in and grab a pack of cool beans because you're talking to them, the millennials, really relate to the product. And this is what I'm trying to say in terms of the attitude side, because they want, if you're engaging with millennials, you need to understand exactly what they're looking for. And this will then be transformational to your business. So you've went through, you've done your desk research, you actually engaged with some of your consumers, and you landed this amazing insight. So you're ready for world domination. Are you ready for world domination? Well, there are a few things that you need to bear in mind and you need to ask yourself and you be really true to yourself. Now, it's only 10 minutes or 15 minutes and we could have a huge list of questions to go through. But for me, it's more about three questions that you need to bear in mind. So, is it potentially really worth going after? Well, first, you need to understand how big really is the opportunity. So, one thing to understand is what is the market size? Okay, let's just take millennials for an example. We're talking about however many, nearly a million people in Ireland alone. That's a big market. Well, if I could get into them and really make something really great like Cool Beans have done, I can really tap into that. Well, bear in mind, there's also the export markets. There's also, everything's connected to the said today. If you look at sales online, you can also reach millennials outside. But bear in mind, it is much harder to do that. But again, you know, don't be constrained to the size of Ireland alone, but also bear in mind if the market is growing or not. If you're looking for an aging population, then maybe there's something there because globally, that's one of the biggest trends and challenges. So if you're providing products for the aging population, then you have a huge opportunity because it will, it will just continue to grow. So try to think ahead and see what the future lies. If you think your projections are tight today, look at how much the market is going to grow. And then that's potentially how you see the opportunity. The next one is about how are you, how are you, how quickly can you actually create your solution? So you might have find, oh, this is an amazing insight. I really can tap into that, but if you are to create that, how long is it going to take? Six months? Two years? Two years. Is that timeline good enough for you to tap into that opportunity, or would you miss the boat? So you need to take those things into account. And if it's a really big opportunity, if question was, question one was, the opportunity is huge. We can't miss that. Then it's about trying to understand within your company structure and resources, what is it that you need to do to turn this around as quickly as possible so you can make this happen within the right timelines. Sometimes being the first to market might be a challenge because you're teaching consumers something new. But if you're at the back of uh, someone that has already started, you can make it better and then you can correct the mistakes that they have done and provide a better solution. So sometimes coming seconds is always a bad thing. So it's really important to understand what is the timing and how quickly you can bring it to the market. Last question for me is really, how does this insight fit with your brand and your company? 
especially when you look at your strategy. If your strategy is around potentially then again targeting the millennials, then that's great. But if it's nothing to do with that, then you really need to think twice. And again, when I talked about the packaging solutions, if there's something around that fits within that trend, then don't ignore it. Go and talk to the producers and understand, well, I found this on my research. Does it tie in with yours? And if it does, then there's something that you can work collaboratively and actually really deliver something interesting. So it's really important to understand what it is that you can do and work together with other companies but you have to be sure that it fits with your company strategy. There's nothing wrong with creating something completely different and people get confused and that is only going to be damaging to your brand. So remember that. So it's really important to be to fit in and if it's really important, you can always create a new brand. One last thought I'm just going to leave here with you today is great people do things before they're ready. So you might think, oh, we don't have the capability, we can't do this. So many people can, and it's really important that you, you can bear that in mind. But a little twist on that is, great companies do things before their consumers are ready. So when you bring something new and inno uh, innovative, people go, oh, God, I never thought of that. That's brilliant, thank you very much. So it's really something to be aware, and again, looking at long-term play, it's really important to be there ahead of everyone else. Thank you.